Hello, everybody. Hi. Welcome to hey. an episode. I think it's, is, is Sandy, is this just episode two? Do we just change ah. it? <laughs> so <Sure. laughs> okay, so this is called Remotely Interesting. And this time around, the, we wanted to do a show about how people have their remote work set up on their end. So um, I invited a few people that I would consider the creme de la creme of the remote facilitation <laughs> and design sprint arena. Those who couldn't make it, uh, obviously are on lockdown, the government's preventing them from using their internet. There's something wrong on their own. <laughs> no fault of their own. So with me, uh, I have Sandy Lamb over in Hi. Germany, source designer extraordinaire, and also GVDS MVP twice over. There's Steph Krushan. Oh, I, I don't even know if you need any introduction. I say, I, everyone says your name and everyone in the crowd room just goes, what, who's that? <laughs> um, he is uh, the, the originator of the I Today conference. He's uh, been doing, he's done a ton of workshops with Jake Knapp. His company in Lausanne, is it? Lausanne, Lausanne? Lausanne, Lausanne, Lausanne City in Switzerland, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Design Sprint LTD. He's also the author of the Sprint Quarter, which is what you absolutely have to reference after you get done with your sprint to go, what the heck are we doing with this thing? You have Ross Chapman, who is calling us and, and contacting us from uh, another re a, a remote location somewhere in Siberia, but he's still with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ross is uh, leading Etch Sprints and doing a whole bunch of design sprints online. He's also very much in the remote facilitation space. Uh, he does a ton of work, ton of content. If you just look at him online, you'll find him. And then there's Magritte. Magritte? <laughs> Magritte, or Magritte is perfect. I, I got I, I to practice it. Yeah, Magritte. Yeah. Uh, and she's with Orange Minds, correct? Yes. World famous for her tours and doing design sprints across multiple countries, multiple cities. Kind of landlocked now, at least for the time being, for what's going on with the coronavirus. And I think China really just didn't, they, they knew what you were doing and decided to let those <laughs> yeah. you not do your, yeah. they cannot, you cannot do your tour. So no, no. no. So. It's quite a change for you. Huh? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it is. A, it will be a change, but it's, uh, it's okay. We can make, still make the best of it. Absolutely. Hey, if you if you got let's let's show the drinks so that we all know that we're that this is a very casual environment. This is not serious. We're with that that's setting the pace right off the bat. And I don't have anything. I have a uh, I have a, a a Paw Patrol bank. That's the most I can do. And the only thing I can do is give myself money. Like, <laughs> you know that this mug, it's Jake who offered it to me. That one. Does it go blue whenever there's something cold in there and red whenever? No, it goes blue? It, it's just fancy. You know, it's uh, it's pretty cool. I was thinking maybe it would have an image of Jake's head when it got hot and then the blue would go yeah. with it. Okay, so the, the uh, <laughs> format for this is that for each of everyone that's on the call right now, we're going to basically showcase how they have their remote uh, kind of set up in terms of their office and what they do, um, anything they feel uh, comfortable sharing. Uh, I'll pick somebody at random and then that person will ask somebody else what their remote work setup is like. And depending on who's on the other side for who's actually participating, we may bring somebody else in because I've invited a few other people. So it just depends on what they're going to come in. Some have uh, standing obligations and may come in at the half hour. But this is just for fun. And this is just to educate others on how, for all of us that are remote work, uh, like uh, gurus, how we actually go about kind of setting everything up. So I'm going to pick something random. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to go to Ross Chapman. And it, please explain how you currently have your remote set up. What do you prefer? Maybe you can even move around your camera if you're not hardwired into something and tell us how you have everything set up on your end. Yeah, sure. So I am on the kitchen dining table, uh, which is really the epicenter of the house. Uh, it, uh, it does have a bit of a, a through road, uh, depending on what people need and where they need to go. And yeah, I've got a, a white wall behind me. Um, it's pretty, pretty standard stuff. And yeah, I, I'm just using a laptop. I know people like have screens and extra keyboards and that kind of thing. Uh, but I've always been a kind of laptop warrior and I actually like the constraint of not much going on. This is, this is how I work. This is really the, uh, Sprint HQ for now and it has been for a few months so I, I would often go to a studio or I would work from home or a coffee shop or wherever and um, yeah it, it kind of fulfills the uh, the rebel in me just to go off the laptop here. So the, the, this this room where you're at is isolated from the rest of the house? It has a door to the hallway 
uh, and yeah, that, that's that's really it. I mean, I kind of what what it does do is when people want to have lunch or dinner or breakfast, then that tells me that actually I should partake in that too because they're kind of causing a, a bit of a stir and a, a bit of a, a fun time. So yeah, it's it's to the back of the house, so I can see the garden. Uh, and it's pretty dreary and overcast out in the, in the UK. Uh, but it's, uh, it's really, it's where I feel comfortable. It's, uh, it's really where I think I can focus and, and really get my head down and do what I need to do here. And so in terms of your tech, are you just using what I'm doing, which is like the camera and your internal microphone? Or do you find that your ear pods are the ones that usually are, are your default? Like you always have to have those in whenever you're doing a remote call. Yeah, I always have the headphones in. Uh, I do have extra microphones and uh, kind of a scarlet box and everything for if I'm recording or, or hosting a, a podcast. And I do have an extra webcam. I guess I'm always keen on kind of paring down and reducing and just making it work for me and I'm not too fussy about quality really um hence the kind of lamp next to me uh I I just don't want a blocker in my way I just like to get on and and get things going so that's uh that's really my setup here okay right and what do you use do you tend to use the extra webcam for is that just if you need to kind of display other things that you want to showcase to other people yeah that uh so when we've been doing like larger events in the past and we want to stream them at the same time i would put it on a tripod to you know the middle of the room not the back but kind of the middle and just show that other people are getting involved uh for now i'm able to extend it to a level that doesn't look like i'm peering down like i am now so it's more at eye level and if i want to stand and share something then uh i can raise it to that point uh but yeah, I've given it to my son for now, who's uh, wanting to be a bit of a YouTube gamer now. So uh, we're, we're going <laughs> to develop that as his new hobby. And, um, you know, in a few months time, I'm sure he'll be up there with the best of them. I mean, PewDiePie better watch out, to be honest. <laughs> so does he? Do, so I have to ask you, because my son also does Roblox and we do every so often we get him, him and I play the same game. So we record it, upload it to YouTube and he has... So this is a dirty little secret of mine. He actually has more traffic to his YouTube channel and to his podcast than I do for my actual business. <laughs> That's just insane. That's sad. And, and I don't do much production either. I look at it and it's like, we released episode 4,000 viewers. I'm like, who is watching this stuff? And it's like, oh, yeah, you, oh, you might want to pivot. <laughs> God. Maybe I should, yeah, I should do that full time and just produce my son's, uh, my son's like, acclimation into doing nothing but Roblox. Yeah, there you go. Um, do you have any advice, Ross, on, on uh, people that are first starting in remote or doing remote facilitation or remote work? What are some things that you learned in getting to the spot where you are now that you feel could really help others? I think with a lot of things that you start from scratch, it's about building the reps we're, we're not born with this innate ability to do something. We just have to practice and fail and learn and just keep on that cycle. So, you know, I, I still run webinars or workshops and I'm like, oh, I wasn't really feeling that. But I asked for feedback and the feedback is is either positive or constructive. And, and that's that's why I come to work. That's what I do. So it's I, I've actually started to really not trust my guts. Uh, because for some reason we're not in tune anymore. I trust the audience and, and the team and they tell me how things are going. I've always got a bit of a kind of quality level, but sometimes the, the moment supersedes any of that. So I, I would just encourage to get the reps in, either do um, a kind of on your own workshop, do it with a colleague, do it with a friend, uh, even just go in front of your teams or clients and, and just do it because most of this is relatively new. So if you've got any of the answers and they're looking to learn or they're looking to move to an alternative, then you shouldn't place so much risk on it and shouldn't worry so much. I also think, and I haven't quite worked this out, but in a in-person 
workshop you go to a room it's blank and after a few hours you've got stuff on the walls and it looks like real progress is being made and decisions are being made and in a remote context I find that actually you do need to set out a canvas you do need a template and I think for anyone coming to that workshop it gives them some confidence that a you can lead them on this journey, uh, B, what to expect and just kind of uncovering that you're gonna start here and you're gonna move over there. And when you don't have that, you kind of create this gap between, hey, let's do this. And then, oh, I've got to quickly kind of move things around and, and, and get things ready. So a little preparation goes a long way, but over the reps, you're gonna to get to a point where your templates and your canvases are really going to sing and it, it takes the pressure off you to manage everything and kind of spin all of those plates and lets you focus on the problem, engage with the team, and the, the framework can kind of pull it all together. So yeah, build up reps, prepare, but more than anything, just execute and learn. For those of you on Zoom and on YouTube, that was Ross Chapman from Edge Sprints. If you have questions for him and other people, start flooding the Q&A with some questions. I know some of you already posted a couple of them. Um, so thanks a lot for that perspective, Ross. And uh, you get to choose the next person who's going to be up to let everyone know about their, their remote setup. Decisions. Uh, I might go with Marguerite because I like the yellow. And I like the drink <laughs> action going. Um, so I want to learn more. Perfect. Cool. Thanks, uh, Ross. Um, so indeed, Marguerite here. Uh, and actually, you just mentioned the yellow as well. And I prefer, so I'm in the living room and I like this. This is our, yeah, it's our living room wall with some things that we've collected from traveling. But I actually like sitting here because whenever, I mean, you're looking at yourself in the camera, you know, now and then. And it's especially, I like the background because it's happy. So um that's where I'm set up. And actually, I am going to try to turn you guys around because I'm in the middle of a, a virtual sprint, actually, as we speak this week. And we had a photo competition yesterday with the team. And it was uh, yesterday, the competition was benefits of working from home versus the office. So what can you do at home that you can't do in the office? So I rearranged the, um, yeah, the office space where I am into like a green garden. So let me see if I can show you guys. Now, so, yes. turn it. so I don't know if you can see. Mm. So this is now, because I thought I, so I'm the yellow, I, I love color and I love green and I love nature. So I don't know if you can see it a little bit. <laughs> but nice. what I basically did is it's just plants. So, I mean, if I stand up, Robert is over there. He's still sitting. <laughs> so I'm in the living room, but I kind of made a wall of green. So that's basically literally physically where I'm set up. Uh, and it's actually fun and funny. I'm noticing now in the call. So I'm a very active person. So I'm not doing full virtual sprints very often. Um, and I also notice now in the call, like I see everybody sitting still and I can't. Like I'm just, I talk this way, I'm moving. And I'm realizing now, like looking at myself, it must, I don't know if it's distracting for people, but it's like I'm a very interactive facilitator. So I think that's. Um, I don't know. One thing I have to get used to, or I don't know how it is for, for viewers. Well, let's, um, let's put it this way. If it was the total opposite, it would be something like this. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, let us now go into uh, <laughs> and vote. And uh, I will start the voting. So, yeah, I, I think true. you're doing just fine. Okay, as long as it's, then it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's totally mm -hmm. fine. <clears throat> okay, perfect. And I suppose people will tell me if they say, please stop moving. But um, no, so let me see. It's actually the first time that I'm using a screen. I always, like Ross said, I've always just used my laptop. I work, if I'm working from home, I usually actually work on the couch quite often because uh, I like it. Just laptop on my, it's maybe not the most, how do I say, was the word ergo, ergonomical? I don't know, you know, good posture wise, but it works for me. But now with the, the whole sprint going on, I actually, I took, um, so Robert's uh, other Robert, I took his screen and it is actually, I do like it because then I have one screen I have for the call. Like I have you guys now and I have the other screen, I have mural or whatever open. So it does help. Um, but it's the first time that I'm really setting this up at home because usually um, I am still traveling to, you know, to different places to, uh, to give the sprint. 
Uh, and we do that because we enjoy traveling. But indeed, that's uh, I think that's off the books, off limits for uh, for quite a while now. So I have to be careful. I have to be careful with getting on a couch or a chair of any type because I have a lot of I have too much. I haven't been running, so I have excess body fat. So I have this dynamic where my head suddenly fits into a pyramid of fat in the background, just and then it just isn't uh, yeah. visually no, satisfying could... at all. I, I would that much one. rather I would at that point I would rather have like what Steph has is like some sort of hood, <laughs> a blanket, something that covers everything up, so I'm, I'm just comfortable at the same time, but just focused on what I'm talking about. No, but that works. If you're on the couch and you put your knees up, it's still fine because I know That's the angle true. thing. So you still got to be, no, I'm, I'm well practiced with on the couch with video calls. It's also, uh, but yeah, but basically that, so I'm in the living room and it's, uh, and as you saw, so there's like, here's the door to the office. So actually Robert, other Robert, so my business partner is sitting there. So he, that you do see him come by quite frequently, but, uh, and I'm using the headphones and he does as well because we are often doing different calls or maybe in a, in a workshop at the same time. So we do work in separate rooms and I like this room better because it has more windows, it has more light, it's bigger. I and was chose that, it, I called it. <laughs> was that an umbrella or a crowbar by the, by the side of the, the door? That's that, oh yeah, that's, yeah, and no, it's like, they're from traveling also. They're from, I think, Oman. But they're actually yeah, they look like well, they're whips basically. But they're from <laughs> for camels. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, yeah, true. But they're for camel, like for camel races. So it's mm -hmm. not like we're using them for anything else. And, and there's a yoga mat in there. If you have people coming in your house looking yeah, for toilet paper exactly. and hand sanitizer, you just whip yeah. out those suckers. You're gonna <laughs> knock them back pretty fast. Yeah. No, exactly. So that's what you're seeing. Yeah. So I think our house is quite filled with strange little gadgets that we've brought back. But yeah, those whips might come in handy for those toilet paper thieves. So same question to you as I asked Ross. Uh, what are some things that going into this mode, uh, now that you're at where you're at, that you would want to tell other people about uh, working in this environment that may help them? Um, yeah, so maybe I will go, I'll answer that specifically from the remote aspect, because actually, and I think, uh, Robert, I've been following you for quite a bit, and we've talked, you know, um, yeah, also last year or before, uh, but I was always a little bit skeptical, or I think afraid of the the, the, the real virtual space, uh, and on the one hand, it's, I always thought, you know, I like contact with people, and I, I want to be in the room, I want to gauge their emotions, I want to feel uh, how it's going, so I was always like, no, you know, physical is better. Um, and I think I was a little stubborn in that way, even like I'm, I was always open to it, but I just never liked it as much. And actually now, uh, and it's not just this week, it was already a little bit before, but more being thrust into And now, I mean, you do really have to do everything virtually, but I'm amazed at how personal it still is and how it's not really different from facilitating uh, an online workshop, or, I mean, an offline workshop. I mean, you need to get used to the tools and I think you need to get the participants a little bit comfortable with, hey, what are they using? Um, but you're still, uh, how do I say, you're still a team and you're still together uh, in that space of time, if it's a few hours or if it's a few days. Um, so I think that's one thing. I think don't approach remote facilitation or remote work differently than you would normally. Uh, I think it's the, still the same, bring yourself to the table or bring yourself to the laptop, as we would say now, maybe. Um, but yeah, and, and embrace it and, and just think that it's interesting to learn new things and people are very open to, I think most people are learning at the moment. So also that the participants in your uh, workshops or in a webinar, uh, they're also figuring things out. So it, it's having that conversation going, it's actually, uh, uh, it's fine. So that's, but that would be my, uh, that may be my own lesson from being a little, I don't know, stubborn for not starting this sooner. So I have a particular question for you that I've been wondering about for the past couple of days. Now that everyone's kind of been somewhat forced into this mode, who's not used to it, and the smoke clears anywhere from six to 12 months from now, when things start getting off of lockdown, they feel like they got it under control, they know how to test, they, maybe there's a test vaccine out, so things start clearing up a bit. Do you think this changes the narrative about how people work and how people engage with each other versus always having to commute, always having to be in person? Obviously, there's some jobs can't get around that. There's no, you know, there's no yeah. way, two ways about it. But do you think that this is going to fundamentally change the conversation about facilitation and design sprints in a way where people may prefer to go back to physical, but there's always the virtual or the remote option? I mean, what are your thoughts about that? Uh, no, I definitely think it will change. So I, and I think it's also, it's, it's bigger than, you know, just workshops or just design sprints. I think in general, that conversation will change. And, and 
I also realized that, um, and perhaps now because of this situation, we're kind of forced into it, but I think also from a sustainability perspective, it's very logical that we're doing these things anyway. Mm. Um, and that I don't, I don't want to put a number on it, but let's say maybe half, or maybe I think even by just the, the situation we're in now that you can see, hey, actually we can even do most our work still without doing it physical. Uh, so I think then, you know, when everything is, let's say, back to normal or, you know, what is what's going to be the new normal? And I think that question is first. So I think maybe put it this way. I think that now it's from just just default, it's workshops are face to face. In general, I think that's still the default. Uh, and I think perhaps the quest that won't be the default anymore. So I think we'll then say, hey, it's possible to do it uh, remote. Can we? We should. It's, it's more economical. It's more sustainable. It's more um, a lot of these things. Um, and then the decision can still be to do it physical, but that's then it's not going to be the default anymore. So I think that's how it's going to change. And I think that's a, it's a good thing. And I'm going to, Ross, I'm going to come back to you real fast, but I forgot to do this with you. Um, Margaret, before I, we switch off to somebody else, uh, rather than saving it at the end while we're contextually talking to you, why don't you let everyone know where they can go online to find out more about you, your company and what you do so that after, you know, having a conversation, yep. that's the end point of that. Uh, yeah, sure. So you can definitely find me on LinkedIn uh, or just Margriet Busemann, that's my name, or our website is uh, orangeminds.nl uh, or Instagram. And Instagram is oh my g design sprints, uh, which is Orange Minds Global, but you can also make the more fun oh my g abbreviation of if you like. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And I think maybe just one final thing on, on what you were saying before, because I mean, Robert and I, our company, we I mean, it was always travel and kind of, and how do I say design sprints for us? Um, and I'm curious how that will be, but I think also this is gonna uh, give us possibilities in the sense that I don't think we'll change the way we work necessarily. But what I mean is that actually, I think this is actually making us even more flexible. So when all the lockdowns or all the borders are open again, actually we have now, we'll have new skills and tools to, I don't know, maybe we'll stay a year in Japan uh, and work, do sprints in the States, you know, just remotely. Mm -hmm. So I, actually, I think this is going to open up for us at least uh, new possibilities in how we work as well. You're more than welcome to come to Dallas. There's plenty of room out here. I like it. I like yep. it. I'll Let's definitely, do it. I've been trying to get anybody I know to come out here at least visit. <laughs> Lee Duncan's kind of put me up on it. So at least I've had, you know, I've had conversations with him. But yeah, follow her on uh on LinkedIn, and as well as as uh, I know that you publish on YouTube, and Ross, I'll I'll come back to you real fast. You're also somebody that posts a lot of content, has been doing a lot of uh, online kind of sessions, impromptu and otherwise scheduled. So, Ross, where can people find out where you're all what you're all about and, and learn more about you? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Uh, I'm spending a lot of time on LinkedIn now, so you can find me, uh, Ross Chapman, on LinkedIn. There's uh, a few communities. Uh, the Remote Sprints uh, chapter is uh, now has a LinkedIn group as well because not everyone's on Facebook, uh, but we're also on Facebook. And uh, the kind of outfit that I work at is called edgesprints.com. So there's all the information, anything that you need from me, you can get there. But uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, definitely keep doing those online kind of uh, webinars and sessions that you do. They're really helpful. And uh, I'm going to start calling, if you continue using that light like that in the future, I'm going to start calling you Professor Chapman because it looks like I'm coming to you to basically let you know about where I am with my homework. And you go, yes, yes, that's good. Uh, you might want to consider doing X. <laughs> it's just me. That's just what I thought. It's like, this is serious business with Ross. I'll take okay, it. Yeah. So Marguerite, uh, you get to pick the next person who is going to step up to the plate and let everyone know what they're doing remotely. Let me see. Um, I'm going to give it to the other lady. Sandy okay. Lamb. Hello. <laughs> hey, what well, is the question? <laughs> what am I supposed to be here? <laughs> I, thought, I thought I was the host and I don't need to talk. Oh, you're a host? Sandy, there, there's a, a, usually with remote work, you want to make sure that when you're in a group that you're kind of paying attention to what's going on in the group so that you don't lose track of the conversation. So just as a best practice, let's make sure that we're at full attention. And when we call your name, you're not kind of, no, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm kidding with you. It's fine. Okay. So Sandy, uh, yes. let us know what, what, what's your remote setup like? What do you've got going on over there? Well, 
well, normally, typically, I work from work. Like I do a lot of remote work at work, actually. So I had actually my all my setup over there, but now I can't even go to my work, so my office there. So I have like this setup that I don't know if it's really ideal, but I, <laughs> I mean, it's really nice. I don't know how it's to got the it. plant action. I really like yeah. it. It I is. Mean, like, Mar- it, it, Marguerite it, it, has like the jungle, which is fantastic. I saw that. I was like, <laughs> yes, that was fun. Like but this, you- like what you're seeing right now, is more of the setup that I need to take calls, do webinars, do podcasts, and stuff like that. But typically, I would be like using this thing. <laughs> That's mm. my laptop on mm. it. Mm. And then I will be like, Han, like sitting right there with my stuff. Mm. Oh, there. <laughs> there is cushions and pillows galore. Got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's my typical work. And this is my. <laughs> your setup. Um, yeah, it's my setup. And I live by myself. So that actually has not changed much for me. Um, yeah, um, I don't even like I I live in a studio space. I mean a studio. Do you call it studio space? Like there's no mm. room or anything. Mm-hmm. So literally, I can show you around. Like that is my kitchen right there. Mm. Um, and then that's literally like my bed over there. <laughs> wow. And then like this. So then me. I know if you're walking towards the camera past <laughs> it, you're done with the meeting and you want to just take a nap. And if you move to your <laughs> left which is my right of the camera yeah. then you're taking a break getting a drink or getting something to eat so now now i now i'm fully positioned to understand what happens off camera oh. so we're good yeah S- cindy I, cindy uh are you allowed to to go out where you are or you have to, oh, to i don't know i don't know i don't i don't look at the news anymore so i just kind of plot myself out of that <laughs> I'm happy where okay. I am. <laughs> so Sandy a week from now is going to be wandering the streets of Lipstick going, why is everything closed? And like people in hazmat suits approaching and going, ma'am. I stocked up like, I think last week already. Like I stocked a few um, um, fresh food and I had my, um, I mean, long lasting food over here. So I was not like, yeah, I have enough here to live. I don't know. I, I mean, I live by myself. So well, how much do I really need? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I... Well, I'm not worried about the toilet paper saturation. So, <laughs> so you, so for what you're set up there, it sounds like you have your, you have your laptop similar to Ross laptop headphones, kind of using the default speaker within there. You have a web. Are you using a webcam or are you, like, is it? This is hold on. This is the webcam. Oh, okay. It's a little bit got tricky it. to show. It's all wired up. But let's see. Hey, this so, reminds me like, of uh, Control the Room. Mm. Yeah, there you go. Like, yeah, and I just have a box right here because I want the right height so that I can show the background. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what it is. Okay. So you're, you're, I think that your background suggests that you're kind of a little bit more comfortable with remote work if you had a little bit more time to, to work with it or what's been, what's been your history mm-hmm. with it and kind of getting acclimated to this? Has it been that, that much of a jump or has it been pretty easy for you? Now it's not focusing anymore. <laughs> I still know you're there. Okay. Yeah. Um. For me, like I said, I've been working remotely for a while, so it's not so big of change for me. Um. I mean, we did the GPTS, so I'm very used to. It. I think I'm one of the very few people, probably, that almost feel like there's no change at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Business as usual. Yeah, because like, yeah, like I live by myself and I often just like people always say I work the whole day. I mean, I do a lot of stuff on my computer, so I, I, I am very introvert, I guess. Like I don't go out that much. I don't go out party. I don't go out drink. I mean, I don't even drink. So, well, you don't, you don't have to worry about the pandemic too, because you're going to miss that completely as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, it's not that much of change for me actually. So for people that are new to the space, what kind of conversations have you been having with them? What kind of questions have you been fielding? Um, a lot of questions about how to handle the homeschools, which I can't even mm-hmm. answer because I don't have a kid. <laughs> uh, yeah, they, it's not just that the fact that they have to work from home, it's the fact that they have to work from home and then still school the children. That has been very tough. It's like a job on a job, right? So... And the other is a lot of people come to me and asking how can I kind of have the same productivity as before. And they feel, 
how do I put it? Like they feel that they are not producing or not as productive as before, and then they worry about how other people feel about them and stuff like that. Um, but my advice is every time, like, just think about that the whole world is going, like, experiencing the, exactly the same thing as you do. So we should be under, like, we should understand each other, right? Like, there's no point of thinking, oh, you are not fast enough because you also are not going to be fast enough. So yeah, I, yeah. yeah, it's just a matter but of understanding. By the way, Mardia, uh, our friend Mardia from Ireland, um, she, uh, she's she been posting on YouTube and she wanted to tell, let you know that uh, you're allowed to go out, but most shops are closed. Just the big supermarkets are open um, with social okay. distancing practice put in place. About two to three people are allowed into shop and the elderly people are, are allowed to shop from nine to 11 a.m. So they have specific mm. hours that they can get there. Um, so <laughs> she's laughing now because I'm actually paraphrasing her. She says, uh, yeah, and she also agrees that overeating is becoming an issue, especially when you're working from home. Um, oh. True. I mean, what do you do when you actually go out to jog and run? Do you actually, as soon as you see somebody like maybe 50 feet away, do you kind of like go to the opposite side of the street? Do you do a beeline through the grass? There's like no social contract when it comes to actually exercising in the open. It's not mm -hmm. like COVID's I just suddenly going to leap from somebody and just like, you know, like a mist kind of travel to somebody else. So. <laughs> So I like I often look out and actually there are quite still a lot of people outside. So mm -hmm. people are mm -hmm. not staying in. And I saw how people like there was a DHL guy drove by and there were like people chasing him asking for mails and they were like contacting each other. So mm. yeah. I, I think it's and actually my... important. It's important for your mental health, you know, just to go outside, not for long, but like for 10 minutes, 15 minutes per day. Otherwise you just get crazy. You know, staying inside. Yeah. I get this feeling that after two or three weeks, people are, unless you're in a place like Italy where there's a real, real risk of, of harming somebody else because of your, um, <clears throat> your exposure to the coronavirus, there's going to be place spots in the world where there's going to be like, nah, how hard can it be? And then people just kind of start doing things that they're normally used to in, unless the environment kind of tells them, no, you shouldn't do that. Or social circles say it's probably not a good idea. But people are complying here in the in the states, and I think Dallas is about to go on lockdown pretty soon. I think the whole city is going to shut mm. down. They've been doing it piecemeal, but I mean, every public facilities, any anywhere where there's more than 20, 30 people, it's it's shut down over here. Yeah, um, and I think it's just going to go full blown shut down. They're they're doing it piecemeal, but really, they should just get it over with. Uh, if I can, if I can actually give you some advices from from Europe, uh, you should already lock yourself up if you can, uh, because that thing is already out there, and even if the authorities know they take time to react, uh, but you should already isolate yourself because it's bad. It's really, really bad. Here it came like so fast. I yeah. think I have been trained really, really well by my family <laughs> <laughs> because my family is in Hong Kong and my dad is actually living in China. So they experienced all this stuff much earlier and they experienced SARS. So they have been warning me this thing for a long time. I, I, I just published an article, but basically before when they were telling me all this stuff, I just said, hey, I'm in Germany, it's all okay. Like, it's far away, <laughs> take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, I just totally like block it out. I even like ignore the messages they sent in because it was just full of tips and tricks how you can prevent this thing, right? And then now it's just right here. But I am glad that um, I got some tips and tricks from them. And yeah, so I was actually in this topic much earlier. That's why I stalked up much earlier too. And mm. I have, um, yeah, I have a few things that got prepared, like uh, the hand sanitizers and a mask and stuff like that. So. My wife's a like huge a strategic awesome. planner. So she basically has been optimizing every single thing we have in our pantry and our supply cabinet and everything else. And it's even like where she's like doing odds and ends ordering from like Sam's Club and uh, other places just to make sure we have everything we need just in case this thing is prolonged. So, you know, it's a big it, benefit because otherwise- to be prolonged, though. I tend to be more tactical in short term, so it's it's a good balance, at least over here. Um, okay, so Sandy, I think you only have one more person you can call it. <laughs> so it <lasts laughs> so long. But before we do, like every others, um, Actually, where can two. Yeah, you haven't gone yet. Hey, you. I, yeah, no, that's true. true. It's between me and Steph, so you got to make a choice. And I'm going, I'm going to imply that whatever choice you make, you actually like the other person more. So, in the <laughs> oh. meantime. Before you make that choice, let people know where they can go online to find what you're all about and uh, learn more about you. Well, they can always come on Thursday around the same time and then look at our podcast. 
<laughs> wow, that was pretty good. I'm impressed. Yes, every Thursday we're here at noon. You can just see us here. Yes. Uh, yeah, and it's like around 6 p.m. in Germany or Europe. So, <laughs> but yeah, uh, otherwise you can find me on everywhere. Actually, I I'm most active on LinkedIn, but I'm also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. What else? Whatever. What else you can find me? Yes, yeah. everything. Yeah. Do a search. It, you're you're in the category of do a Google search like Ross Chapman. You do do a Google search for the name, and you're gonna have the entire first page is gonna be nothing but all of his like <laughs> his touch points. Same with Steph. The, I mean, it's trick, always fun to because, like. Go ahead. The trick is because there is this famous singer in Hong Kong has exact the same first name and last name. So if you do oh, yeah. just search for Sandy Lam, you will not find me. The trick is you need to add the Sandy Lam. So T H E Sandy Lam, then you will find me. <laughs> the, that's the, the, actually the reason why I created that hashtag as well. Yeah. The real the real twist of the internet would be is if you lip synced uh, one of her songs and basically so yeah you could pop up in search results and go who is the real Sandy Lam it would be a <laughs> side distraction for you. So okay, moment of truth. Who is it going to be, me or Steph? Well, that's quite obvious. I'm going to choose Steph. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I would too. Right. I agree. I, I'll just kind of move away from the microphone. Steph, you go right ahead and tell people what you're on. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so everything changed very fast in here. Um, so what we do is classic design sprints, going to the clients, you know, working for weeks and uh, f doing physical sprints. Uh, so I was always interested about remote design sprints. We've done some lot of experiments, smaller workshops, but. Uh, it, that came that came so fast, you know, and uh, so fast that basically I was literally working at my office, and then we got the new that no, you have to go back home and you lock yourself up, and nothing was ready. So I just worked from my guest room um, that you can see behind that is super boring. There is nothing behind. Um, I have a second screen, which is quite cool um, because if you need to do some uh, remote work like on mural, it's great to have the second screen, and maybe I can show you around if you want. Yeah, go yeah. for it. So, sure, I like it. Yeah, we are quite lucky. I'll make a because... down payment today if I like everything I see. <laughs> okay, so we are quite lucky because we have quite a, a big apartment, which is which is great uh, in this kind of situation. And I'm just gonna go outside so you can see. There's Egle, you can say hi, and Jules, my son. Mm -hmm. And okay. maybe I can show you outside because I think it's uh, it's more interesting. And uh, the last thing I did as a um, Kind of as a as a hero dad, you know, I went outside, you know, fighting COVID. I had a mask on, and I went to um, to a store to buy a sandbox <laughs> that you can see here. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's the last thing I did. Uh, it wasn't about buying food, or it wasn't about buying supplies, or whatever. It was about buying this, because you know, it this saves us so many hours per day. Basically, like we can work, we can do stuff because my son. He has something to do, totally uh, impossible, uh, you know, working hours and stuff. And yeah, what can I show you? Uh, really, uh, there is, uh, which is great. Go there if I want to go for a run. Uh, and since there is no one, it's not forbidden, or I'm allowed to do it. And just so you can see over there, I don't know if you can see that it's the Alps, and Italy is just behind. So, mm -hmm. no, 80 miles straight there, it's Italy. Uh, just to tell you how close we are, and we are just in between of Italy and France. It's the the worst places probably in the world to be right now. <laughs> so we are in the lockdown. We can go out, and that's uh, that's pretty bad, yeah. So yeah, mm. that's about it. So is the sandbox for the kids that you bought, or yeah. is it for the cat? No, no. <laughs> I was wondering yeah. exactly. Because the cat's hanging out there like this. Like, uh, yeah, is this mine? Actually. Yeah, actually, that's right. I'm gonna um, yes, yeah, move the cat from there. No, no, it's it's obviously for the kid, uh, and the sand is supposed to be cat repellent, so hopefully he's not gonna go to pee inside. It's no, pretty but, uh, telling that he actually went outside to tell us the answer rather than going back inside. <laughs> yeah, but but I th I think it's key, you know, when you when you work from home to to have a great setup to work with, but also to to think about where your family is going to be and to have some safe zones where you, you know you, your kid is going to play there, so you're going to be at the other side of the apartment. A lot of people are dealing with that right now. They have to work with their kids at home. Um, and I've been thinking a lot like um, lately about 
our full five-day design sprint, how we're going to make it uh, uh, work remotely. And I've created a crazy template on Mural. I just can't wait to show it to you. Um, and also about tailoring the program of the sprints so people can actually take care of the kids. You know, they have more hours today to take care of the kids. And yeah, it's we have to deal with that. So That's going to be something I'm going to be working into some of the, um, the GVDS sprints is that we're going to have some time so that if we need to take some breaks for to check on kids or they, like at the top of the hour, every 10, 15 minutes, like at the, for every hour, then we might actually, you know, involve that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think this is key. Uh, and to be honest, uh, doing fully virtual sprints this is new uh, to me um it's um i i still think that it's better to run design sprints physically with the people in the same room uh, you have more momentum you have more energy and in normal time in europe it's no problem to i think steph needs another bridge to actually connect herself to the up. outside uh ah, i'm losing you i'm gonna go inside i think we are you are losing me. Is it better? I'll just, I'll just send you a bridge extender so that you can actually go on the patio and then you can you can actually connect while you're running too, so you can actually. See this. That's fine. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I thought Wi-Fi would be strong enough. Yeah. So what I was saying is that I think in virtual sprints, all the voting is way better because you don't see uh, what other people are voting. Uh, and this is great. It's way more fair and it's way more. Um, there is less bias um because you don't see what the decider is voting and i think that's something better actually than uh, physical sprints so it's one of these things that is better so I, I think it's great it's a great opportunity it's crazy to see all the sprint agencies jumping on the remote thing um yeah i just hope it's going to be more emulation than plain competition or whatever uh, but i think it's great because it's I think we sh we have to be sharing the sharing the knowledge, sharing the resources, sharing experiences, and it's a great opportunity for everyone to to learn from each other's. And thank you so much about what you did, um, Robert, to to share so much with GVDS because when we had to go fully remote, it was crazy help for us. So yeah, yeah. So um, thank right, you. I've got to help. And what, so the question of the hour for that the Mardea asked too is. Um, is I today still going to be happening in August? Do you still have that on the on the map, or is that kind of one of those things where it's a wait and see until things either improve or what? It, what it, what's your thoughts on it so far? This is a very good question. It's um, it, it sounds like it, it's possible to to do it in August. Um, it could even be a crazy opportunity because it could be maybe the first events you know after the end of the world. You see, it would be kind of the Phoenix event where everyone will like to come you know um but what we are doing actually we have been talking with the congress center uh that's welcoming us and to have a second date so what we are doing right now is like the the main date is the main the date are the dates in august but we're gonna have also a fallback date later in the year it's gonna be in december or uh january next year which means that when you buy your tickets, uh, we say it's either in August. If we have to postpone, it's going to be uh, six months after at that speci uh, special uh, date. And uh, I, I think it's the best thing to do right now because there is so much of uncertainty. Uh, we can guarantee that it's going to happen in good condition, whether it's in August or in January next year. So here's a, here's a thought too. If they do delay it until next year, like 2021, could you potentially take that I to date date since everyone's still going to be their tickets are still good yeah. and make that kind of like a virtual meetup where everyone who is going to go to the conference meets up in person, uh, like online in advance so that you can make a promise to meet each other in January when you come together physically in person. So the, the, the event <laughs> that was supposed to happen in person goes online and then mm -hmm. becomes kind of like a, hey, I just want to use this for networking, get, a, get to understand some of the speakers, what they're all about, and yep. kind of promote and get people to know one another. So it reinforces the notion that they're physically going to meet when they, if you do delay it later on. Mm -hmm. um... This is interesting. Uh, I know that, for example, from business to button in Sweden, they are going fully virtual remote. Um, it's not something we want to do, but what you're going to do for, for sure is to creating a, a Slack channel. So a Slack, a Slack group where people can already exchange and, and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know if we should, if we postpone to January, if we should start something in August. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. It just, um, 
yeah, like, sh should the speakers be invited? Like, should Jake or Alex be part of this or not? You know, it's things we have to be fine. Uh, for me, I today, the value of it is that it's a physical event. Uh, it's a physical conference. It, but yeah, it's also about networking and it's about creating a community. So it could yeah. be six months of casual promotion with some touch points. It would it, yeah. it'd have to be managed with the other work that you have to do to keep the business going. But exactly. potentially it could be something where you you're kind of now you have a six month ramp all the way until that physical meetup where you can just promote the heck the heck out of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Why not? Actually, I think that could be a very good option if it's postponed to January. If we see that hopefully in the next weeks, all of this mess is going to be cleared up and we can do it in August, then we're going to have, you know, to do a lot of, uh, it's going to happen physically and we're going to promote, you know, the events uh, at, a, at a big scale and to make it happen in, in August, which means that it's about reaching the, the clients, the, like the participants, reaching the sponsors as well, you know, uh, so it's going to be quite a race if, if it's happening in, uh, in August. Yeah. Yeah. So um, where can people find out more about you, Steph, what you're all about uh, with Design Spread LTD and everything else you got going on? I just wanted to say a last thing before uh, I got a scary letter yesterday, which is this. And uh, basically, I'm part of National Guard in, uh, in Switzerland. Uh, and I might be called in the next days to go fight COVID, you know, to help rescue people in, at the hospitals and stuff. Wow. So I don't exactly know what I'm going to do in the next days. So about, you know, my, my setup, like everything is fine. My family, everything is fine. You know, we will live and work at the perfect place right now, but I don't know what I'm going to do in the next days. So this is pretty scary. But anyway, uh, you can find me at uh, designsprint.com, design-sprint.com. You can find me on LinkedIn at Steph Cruchon. You can find me on Instagram. It's design.sprint. And yeah, and online. Um, and tomorrow we're gonna have a webinar in French uh, on uh, on Zoom about uh, remote collaboration tools. Not really about design sprint, but about how you set up a remote environment with lots of tips and tricks. And it's gonna be in French because uh, yeah, I see that people here they need a lot of uh, guidance. And, and yeah, that's it. Where can people go to find out about that event? Is that on Design Sprint? If they go to Design on Sprint, they'll be able to see it there. No, no. So uh, the event is itoday.ch. So okay. itoday.ch. Ch Got being it. the Swiss extension. Uh, yeah, there is a link from designsprint.com. And yeah, it's going to be amazing. Uh, so Jake is going to be there with um, the Design Sprint Masterclass. Alex Osterwalden, Eve Pinger uh, will be also there to, to run the Masterclass. Uh, I can announce it now, but Kai Halley will be there with, with us uh, for a special workshop as well. And yeah, very exciting. Just, uh, just hope we're going to be able to do it uh, in August. And if not, it's going to be in January. So it's funny, while, while everyone's been talking, I just noticed I was planning on having the Q&A kind of have at the end. But all of you have been proactively putting going into the Q&A and ask, answering Johnny's questions that he's been posting there, whether it's been Ross or Marguerite yeah. or, uh, or Steph and kind of like doing that. And he's still posting stuff. I mean, now that he's already answered it, there's one question that's still lingering there is, yeah, he's, you are an active listener, Johnny. I know that about you. He goes, uh, have you found any tools that make workshops more physically engaging? For example, a digital pen for writing down post-its as opposed to typing them. So anyone can come off mic if you want, if you want to uh, answer Johnny's question. Then after that, I'll, I'll show you around my, my uh, loft. And exactly. Like doing. Because I need to call you, uh, Robert. <laughs> Uh, no, tools that are more physically engaging. I mean, Wycom tablets are pretty much the thing that I know people use a lot of. Um, I mean, some people use an Apple Pencil in their iPad, especially if they want to draw stuff on the very versatile with that, and they'll mm -hmm. export what they do into Mural or something else. So there, there's the iPad seems to be a physical extension that can be used as a digital uh, kind of bridge into like somebody who likes to, to kind of draw phys with stuff. Um, Easy way to do it is just basically take pictures of, of drawings that you do on your smartphone and then upload those to whatever whiteboard or whatever uh, thing you're using. And that F, really the only uh, hurdle for people is just to you know understand once they have the image on their phone, how do they transfer it to wherever they need to go. Um, and that takes a little bit of education at first, a little bit of handholding, but once they get going, then they start putting smiley faces and uploading those into different stuff. So yeah, you see, you see it kind of grow and they, they feel proud of the fact that they can do it. Um, but I'm curious why, why is 
writing more engaging than typing because to me actually has no difference. I don't know what you guys think. So I'm an artist by trade. I, I don't practice much of it, but I was drawing like pencil and pen art when I was six, when I was my son's age. And I was doing it so well that banks would, would like purchase my stuff from the school and hang it up in their lobbies. So I was somebody that was always drawing centric. Um, and I, whenever I've done in-person or virtual sprints, there are people that are natural doodlers and can express themselves the, the best that way. That's just naturally how they are. Some are cartoon, cartoonists, others don't necessarily do like drawings, but they're, they're perfect with like diagrams. They can, they can write out in diagrams what they want. But I always found that it's just the, just taking whatever they do and, and using that medium and transferring into digital is, is usually the thing they but just that, need to understand. But that is drawing. But in terms of typing and writing, mm. I think it's even better to actually do it virtually because personally I have a crappy handwriting so it makes it very hard to read an actual exactly. post it so <laughs> you know yeah, it's that's... so much better virtually yeah yeah for me too like when I run the workshop I love the mural because everyone types and I don't need to worry about reading their writings and mm. yeah mm. I, I don't but think I just wonder about the and I just wonder about the engaging part because I don't know maybe for me, that's no difference, but maybe for someone else. Yeah. And Alex is, is, I, uh, go ahead. No, I just wanted to say, cause I, I, for me is the same. So I enjoy the typing, but I have one person in the sprint now and she's always writing. So she has one of these pens and she's writing. So I think it could be like you were saying, Robert, that it's just a personal choice. And I do think it's, and it, it kind of does make the, the board, uh, how do I say? more fun in a way i mean she also writes clearly but it does it gives this thing of you're not all technical but i don't mm. know if it's more engaging but i think it's the choices to the person i suppose but um uh, it's good mm. that there's a lot of typing as well because it keeps it clean the, yeah. there is a specific moment uh, in the sprints which is lightning demo you know when you capture the lightning demo um which in, in real it works really well to to just catch something quickly instead of taking screen grabs um because adds a level of abstraction so you you don't commit too much to the way it looks um, and and I really like it so that's the reason why when I run sprints virtually I try to, to sketch uh, actually I got this like the, the stylus uh, for the mm -hmm. iPad the only thing that sucks is that I don't have the right iPad because this works only with iPad Pro or iPad 6, I figured out. So I have this and it's totally useless. So, <laughs> but, but anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna figure that out. You can always sell it on eBay for about the same cost. So if you wanted to make your, if you couldn't return it, you could do that. Um, yeah, and I, I had upgraded my iPad a, lot, a while back. It was hardly anything because I could trade in my old one. So yeah, I know what you mean. But I do use that for, I actually, my son uses it more so when he's doing Khan Academy. They have a they have kind of like a, a, a scribble mode where you can kind of go into the the details and write out your part your math problems before you do it. So, mm -hmm. so so Robert, it's getting dark in here. So can, can we ask you to um, to to show us your setup? Yep, I'm yeah, going to disconnect gonna my <laughs> I'm going to disconnect my landline and my microphone. So you, it, it should still stay connected. So let's see. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to see half of my screen is getting darker and half of them are getting brighter. <laughs> yeah. Can you, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Marguerite looks like she, it's like the, like, the, the like, like uh, the world is kind of tight going down and like she's got the light. There you go. So oh. That's good. <laughs> that's just speaking. Yeah. Just the glow of the monitor. Okay. So you guys can hear me. All right. Let's, um, by the way, uh, Johnny posted something about handwriting and memory, uh, a blog post in chat. And he also asked a question about a, designing a pandemic, a business pandemic plan, which we can get to in a sec. So let me show you real fast how I've got everything set up here. So normally it's this, it's just a MacBook Pro. It's just talking through it um, and uh, using the microphone in it. I use the microphone here for podcasting and for, for audio quality. If I'm gonna be taking anything I do in this space and, um, and using it for uh, other things like, like uh, you know, podcasts, audio clips, whatever. So let me have you stand up. So this is my setup right here. And this is uh, an in progress. It used to be my wife's kind of work space, but um, I use it now for day trading as well as for doing uh, design sprints. So this usually is the monitor that shows the tick charts that I'm looking at. 
and I only trade like the first two hours of the day and then I'm done. Um, and the, that's been a, for, for what it's worth, it's been a, like a, an amazing, crazy time the past like week or so. Um, so mm -hmm. I haven't been doing too bad in that regard. Um, <laughs> So I'll do, do more over here. So this is like the entire desk set up here. So it's pretty Spartan. That's an Ikea desk from like 20 years ago, if you can believe that, or around the time that Ikea first started making desks and we still use it to this day. Um, and then the general area here is just basically for, um, for, for play. Like this is where my son basically does all his Legos. Uh, this is actually pretty cool in terms of a standing desk. So if I get tired of standing up, I'll be basically here and just putting the laptop like right here and literally have like a light on this side, like that, so that I can literally stand up and work. And this really works really well at night if I'm half asleep, so hmm. there's that. So, but basically this upstairs is where I normally work. And then sometimes I'm downstairs and I'll show you a neat little trick that I do to make a standing desk up there in a second, um, really fast. This is, what my son is right now. <laughs> I take full advantage of the fact that I am on a call. So he'll get back to actually doing work once I'm done. Um, so I may lose you. I'm going downstairs. We'll see. And I'll show you one last thing. So the home office upstairs is the primary place where I do most of my work. Finally, Hold it. Mm -hmm. I shut the door. Um, it's this. This is my standing desk. This is actually a Tupperware fridge maker salad container, like for a salad head. And all I do is I put it right down like this, and I put the laptop right on top. And now I have a standing desk. Save myself two thousand bucks. Spartan way of doing it. But now I can move this anywhere I want to, depending if I'm making a sandwich or. Um, perhaps like cleaning up something on the counter when I'm on a call, but it's really versatile in that regard. Only problem is, is that I'm speaking in a really wide area. So it tends to echo. And for some people that are on worse connections, it doesn't work too well. Hmm. Finally, Steph, you were, uh, were roaming outside a bit. This is what it looks like on my side. I have a highway that's out there, but since there's hardly anybody traveling these days, it's not as noisy as it normally is but this is the view from where I'm at in Dallas. So this wow. is a tributary. Um, my yard is a mess, so don't think anything less of it. It's got full of dandelions, everything else, but this is what it is. Out there is a tributary. So this floods and goes down whenever there's rain in Dallas. So that's the entire thing. I'll sometimes be out here taking calls, but I usually has, have crisp the application running in the background so that there's not a lot of background noise. That works really, really well. Um, but on days like this where it's only 80 degrees, I'll usually take client calls and as long as they're okay with it, um, it's a nice way of keeping the conversation casual and uh, still talking business, but understanding that everyone's in a home environment. There's, it, you can show through example that it's not hard to do this. It just takes, a little bit of practice and understanding the tools to go remote and usually you're in good shape. So mm. that's at least my remote world on my end. Oh, one other thing there is, I use a second computer over here and this one is used for all sorts. That's like my utility computer. So this one is sometimes used for my son's education, but it's also used as a second computer if I'm doing streaming to restream.io. So I'll be streaming to, um, to uh, like two or three different services outside of YouTube. This, this worked really effectively in terms of having another station I can kind of reference. And I've done that several times with Sandy in the past, especially for the global virtual design sprint. Um, that's it. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to ask. But it's- uh, Headphones? What's that? Headphones? No, I don't use them. I don't use headphones. Not at all. No. I use, I, well, I'll take that back. Sometimes I'll use AirPods. Uh, I tend not to just because I find that I you lost get that look yeah. where people will look at that. you and keep smiling, but they know they can't hear you. They're like, hmm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You just know that they're they're not getting it at all. So, but you you mentioned that you use a mic before, right? Like a clip-on mic. 
I do that oh, lavalier that. microphone. So I do that whenever I'm recording videos for uh, promotional stuff. So I'm going to be doing some videos for the Global Virtual Design Sprint this weekend as a part of a promotional push, push for next week. And I also do those for training modules so that I'm not speaking like this whenever I'm doing training. I'm actually speaking to them like I would if I was just in front of them. So I, I, it's true. I do have a lot of different equipment, but it just depends on the situation. I have a key mm. light some other stuff that I use to kind of put the light right, but this, mm. this works just as well. Does anyone have any kind of given light set up besides what is in your room? Mm, no, no. Okay. Interesting. I'm experimenting it. So like what I have here, I have this thing. Ooh. Like a small ray. Mm -hmm. And then I have this light right here that is pointing to me. I actually yeah. like that, but how much do those cost? I mean, how much was the, the round light that, that you- That little thing that yeah. was like three euro. That's it? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, I, yep. I think it's really worth it because when you when you look at the gallery mode, you know, you yeah. clearly it's Sandy who is the the more the most crisp, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I I do have an extra camera though. I'm not using the camera on my Mac, so maybe that makes a difference too. But if I it? turn this thing off, let's see. Like now it's off. It makes no, it's a little still bit better. Difference, I think. Yeah. Yeah. You're still good. Yeah, much better than the rest. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Robert isn't daylight, so that's still good. But the rest of us are... Uh... I take full advantage of this every time I can get it. <laughs> so the, 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 otherwise, yeah. I'm, I'm really pasty in a key light. It doesn't matter how much yellow I put in it. I'm, I'm looking pretty <laughs> old and ghostly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I still think Ross has got the boss set up over there with the light. I still think that's... Yeah. The <laughs> level, so. yeah, fair enough. I, I'd say that. I'll do better. Sorry, Robert. No, it's fine. I, I think it's fantastic. I'm complimenting you. I think it's great. Outside of me using like uh, virtual backgrounds, if, if any of you on the call actually play, play with that, before, that would be the last question I, I have. I haven't, but I want to. I will soon. So there's two things when it comes to calls. There you go. Steph's got it. So basically, you can in Zoom, you can actually change your virtual background to anything you like. Um, and in the last Global Virtual Design Sprint, we had a ton of these. I mean, one of them is basically using like this. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> and basically Ooh, choose that. Fancy. Um, yeah. But it just depends on the contrast between you and the background <laughs> actually make that happen. Uh, and yeah, you can do um, like you want to do with the about the bikini bottom. You can do that. Uh, we did something for Halloween as well. I think the favorite that overall before was the cat. Was the, the oh my god? Oh, god. Oh, so why are these on there? <laughs> I, I, you just find desktop wallpapers and you upload them and they're perfect for, ah. for kind of being in the background. Um, <laughs> and I like the, other the thing one that you that had you like four cats. I like the one that you have four cats behind you. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's the one. It's like this. You just have... They're like looking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. And I know, you, I know everyone has to go. One last thing. Uh, if you do not have Snap Camera, that's something that I would highly recommend people invest in. Um, in fact, I, there you go. That's perfect. So snap camera wow. basically uses, wow. uh, uses the ability <laughs> to, um, put a mask on what you're doing. So it runs like side, just a side, like right next to, um, right next to what you're doing in zoom. So you can put any kind of like a filter you want, as long as you use the zoom camera as an option. So you can do something like this. And basically make your make your virtuals uh, make your virtual things a little bit fun. So you can do this, and you will that's waste it. about twenty minutes kind of making this happen. So uh, that's yeah. pretty hot. Mm. Awesome. But it, it does it have to be connected to Zoom? No, you Is can it do only... it on anything really. You can do it on okay. OBS. You can do it on a lot of different platforms. But uh, yeah. somebody brought this into the GVDS and it just uh, caught on like crazy. Yeah, cool. Yeah, Although my favorite one is usually like this. So the one where you just yeah, have a yeah, yeah. So. It, it's called what? It's called snap what? Snap camera. Snap camera. Snap camera. Yeah, camera. yeah. That's looking cool. it up already. Yep. <laughs> oh God, Sandy. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so yes, if you have any, yeah, there you go. So if you have any casual environments that you want to just have like a team meeting on, then then these usually will pass the time. So. Okay, so we're we're. Amazing. we're 
we're 10 minutes over. So cool. uh, I want to I want to thank Johnny Say for uh, providing the questions on Zoom and for uh, Mardea over on YouTube for kind of there you go. That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> for answering the thing. Uh, we'll have this recording up on YouTube mm -hmm. and also on demand on Zoom. Uh, I think we've we've given everybody some touch points on where they people can find each other uh, online. Do you anyone on the call want to leave with any kind of uh, parting gifts or uh, any kind of thing that they'd like to leave people with as a reference point? Like anything you'd, that you'd like to recommend for remote work or remote sprints or what have you? Or if you just want full of snap camera, that's totally fine with me. I'm, we're gonna end things. <laughs> I'm already, I'm already looking it up. I'm already distracted, yeah, distracted and trying to I download it. Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> exactly. I, <laughs> I was like, I got it, I got it. I want this. I need this. Yeah. No, from my side, I don't know. Not, not nothing specific. I think I've been online for about ten hours today, so I think I'm done. But yeah, uh, it was really too. good to yes. be uh, to be invited for this. Uh, and great to see you all. So I think definitely, yeah, let's see how long this all keeps up. We don't know if it's how many months it's going to be, but let's, um, let's do this again sometime. Yeah, this cool. is cool. Yeah. So I have it on gallery view. If you still haven't gotten Snapchat loaded or Snap camera loaded, uh, I'll give you about one more minute and then you can either just say, you know, do you can put something, a prop on, on where you are and kind of put that up to the camera for like a group shot can do both. or you can do what Sandy doing, do both where you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So 30 seconds, awesome. you can grab something that's next to you or a mug or something, the blue mug, like for instance, there you go. And I'll, I'll do my obligatory, uh, right, there you go. <laughs> I'll go that route. Okay, you ready? I marks, get set and one, two, three. All right, go. there you go. All right. Did you do it? Oh, no, no, wait a minute, I'll do one more time. I missed that. Oh. I missed that one, two. <laughs> Three. All right, there you go. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you very much for stopping by and being part of this. Uh, Thank Mark, you so much, Robert. All of you stay safe, Steph. I hope everything works out for you over there. And Ross. Thank stay, you. Stay, continue to be the authority on everything when it comes to remote sprints and remote facilitation. There you go. Amazing. All right, everybody. Thank you so much, Robert. Bye, bye, guys. Thanks for coming. Hey, thank you, Robert. All right. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye, everyone.